The hard-fighting Australian salmon is a common temperate water species most recognised as a coastal or beach fishing target. However, in the cooler months, large schools of salmon will often enter the estuaries and provide some incredible sports fishing. The Australian salmon is a schooling fish that moves up and down our coastline, generally chasing bait fish or the correct temperatures for them to either breed or to move into the areas that they're comfortable. Often when they're moving up and down the coastline, they will come into an estuary, especially on incoming tide, actually chasing bait. If there's a sufficient food in these estuary systems, they'll stay in there for a good few weeks. All right. Well, we've come down, it's late winter. We've come down to the New South Wales South Coast. Any one of the little estuary systems down here, and we're chasing Australian salmon. Fantastic sports fish. And one of the fish that are quite prolific in our estuary systems during the, during the cooler months. Superb fun. Like I said, great fighters. You can have a ball on these all day. A couple of important things when you are fishing for salmon on the south coast is having good quality tackle. Today I'm fishing with one of the Ravex Inazumas. But what I like about the Inazumas is that if you can actually see while that fish is fighting, it's actually quite a nice taper. Some of the like seven foot spin sticks you get these days a quite quite a fast taper so it, meaning that the tip bends from the top whereas you can see this we've got a nice arc in the rod and the graphite's nice and light beautiful rod and i've matched this rod with one of the Robex exo strikes and again beautiful smooth drag this one's in the 2000 size i've spooled up with d8 cast braid and this is six pound braid so six pound braid seven foot rod 2000 size reel and you're set to actually catch as many of these fish as you want and the best thing is nice and balanced you don't get too tired but you can actually put enough hurt on the fish as well to tire them out quickly and get them into the net saying that let's get this one in the net you can see we can't get ourselves another one. One of the things with these um, Australian salmon, any of the plagic fish we're fishing down here, is that they're chasing small bait fish. So that's what you want your lure to represent or to Im imitate. They don't actually have to be huge lures. So all the, all the lures are, are like your, your main soft plastics you're looking at or anything in the sort of two to three inch and very slim profile. So they move through the water quite quick and fish them on light jig heads. You don't need to fish heavy, heavy jig heads because um, what you want to do is that you want that lure to look as natural as possible. So anything in that three inch range and natural colors, whites, greens, light browns, anything that looks like a small minnow or a small mullet and these sandbars will just crawl all over them and you can have a ball with them. And they're, they're not expensive, they're reusable most of the time. So yeah, little soft plastics um, in that sort of size range is perfect for these sorts of fish. Oh, look at them all. <laughs> oh yeah, on. About five or six fish come in real quick then, after my lure. One of the joys of fishing these south coast uh, estuaries in winter, or even uh, early spring, ever since the uh, Eden Cannery closed, it's, uh, the amount of salmon along the coast is just prolific now. And they certainly can, they can be a little bit of a pain when you're trying to chase flathead or trevally or, or brim. Um, they're very quick to grab you, grab any sort of offering, but particularly if you're fishing anything like those small three inch minnows or two and a half, three inch grubs. You got another good thing with salmon is it's, um, it's a good way to actually sort of hone your skills when you're fighting a fish. So you can actually use that rod you can see it quite nice bending that and the salmon like keeping his head down but just keeping him tight and making him work for him, tire him out. You don't want to be giving him slack line. The last thing you want to do is drop your, your rod tip down because as soon as that he gets his head and then they'll take off but you keep the pressure on him the whole time. He's about an average size Australian salmon. Beautiful little fish, great sports fish. 
One of the things when you're fishing estuary systems and lake systems and rivers is you're always looking for structure. And a lot of the time that structure is in the form of uh, weed beds. And you can see here, we've got a classic little, some broken weed and in between them, you've got patches of white sand. And you'll find that any of the estuary fish like flathead, brim, blackfish, even leather jackets and some of your less desirable species that you're not really targeting, they'll sit in amongst either in the weed or in those little white patches and actually waiting for an opportunist time to actually come out and you know hit, hit a bait fish or hit a, a worm or something that's actually moving. So fishing those little gaps in the weed is really, really a productive way to fish, especially small lures soft plastics you could even fish hard bodies and blades but soft plastics i've found over the years has been one of the more productive styles of lures the tackle when we're chasing these australian salmon especially when you're casting light lures is quite important it's not complex but it is quite important what we're actually using here is one of the rovex inazuma rods it's a seven foot graphite rod the reason the graphite's important is it does two things firstly they're quite light so they're comfortable to use all day but the other great thing about them is they've got quite a sensitive tip this one's seven foot long but the sensitive tip what that does allows me to keep in contact with my line the whole time but also i can see my jig head and my soft plastic as it's drifting if I get a tiny tick from say a brim or one of the other bycatch species. On top of all that, what, what are the bonus of the, of the graphite rods is it actually allows you to actually make nice long casts as well, which is important because the longer your lure's in the water, obviously the longer you're a, you're a chance of getting a fish. And as I speak, now this is something different. I don't think this is a salmon. This might be a uh, flatty and it is. You can see there, that fish has come up from that little shell grit there behind that weed bed. Just look how magnificently camouflaged this is. If I let it, actually, if I let this fish go back down to the bottom, I'll let him swim back down the bottom, you can actually see it's almost invisible there. Just amazing. You can see those broken speckles across his back. A dusky flathead really make it hard for them to actually see. A lot of the time the flatties, because they actually use that camouflage, they'll bury themselves slightly in the sand so that all that's actually, you can see, is their two eyes. And then when a bait comes over, they're, they're an implosion feeder. So all they do is actually open their mouth and actually suck the bait in. So they sit there and use the current to actually bring the bait to them. One of the real benefits of fishing when you're chasing any sort of fish in the South Coast, especially if at the moment we're targeting Australian salmon through winter and spring, but the bonus is all the bycatch species, so flathead, whiting, brim, blackfish, you know, even things like trevally and tailor you'll occasionally get. So it's a real bonus that yeah, if, you, if you vary your lures up a little bit and change to grubs, we're using one of the Jarvis Walker grubs in this situation. But yeah, grubs and paddle tails and little minnows, you just never know what you're gonna catch. Okay, so when, when you're fishing with braided line, it's always important to actually add a length of leader line. Now you can use fluorocarbon, you can use mono, depending on what sort of fishing. Both are great. Fluorocarbon is certainly a lot harder to see in the water. So it doesn't really matter. I actually like mono in sometimes when I'm actually fishing with my um, with jig heads and soft plastics. Normally about a rod length, maybe a rod and a half length. And as you can see, I use a, uh, the knot there is actually an all bright knot. And then like I said, about a rod, rod and a half length of leader attached all the way down to your to your jig head and it's again it's quite a light jig head and I just attach that with the with a simple uni knot. Okay so one of the important things when you're rigging your soft plastics whether it's a single tail grub like this one or a, a minnow or a paddle tail or whatever it is is actually to rig it straight. So the important thing is the first thing you've got to do is actually measure your your plastic so you work out exactly where that's going to come through so you can see it's coming on that coming at that second rib on the soft plastic and then what you do on this paddle tail make sure you obviously start it right right in the center so it's important that you go you don't start out too wide or on the edge start right in the center of your of the body of your plastic and just thread it through nice and slowly feeling its way through and when you get to the area that you actually need to exit the plastic you just what i do is i just pull it out a little bit like that so the points through but not the barb you're just looking at it going right that looks about right and then push it all the way through just nice and slowly and then you actually 
spread your plastic out. Now you can see it's sitting dead straight in the center of the plastic. It's not crumpled up. You're ready to go and fish. One thing when you're fighting these salmon is, is use your rod as an extension of your arm. So that way you're sort of actually fighting it and you're not like sort of, you know, like everyone sort of goes crazy and they're whipping their arms around and ripping their shorts and tearing their underwear and all that sort of thing. Whereas all it is is just a matter of just, just let, let the rod do the work for you and use it as extension your arm. Tuck the butt in under your forearm and it's actually quite nice, quite easy. You can sort of stay there all day fighting the fish. This is a pretty decent sized salmon. But um, quickly with that, that bend and power in the rod, you can tie the fish out. The other really good thing about soft plastics fishing, especially when you're fishing the modular system where you're matching your soft plastic to your jig head, is only a single hook. So there's a couple of advantages in that. One, you're not gonna to do too much damage to the fish. But the other thing is you're not gonna do too much damage to yourself or if you've got kids or inexperienced anglers, there's only one hook rather than multiple treble hooks swimming around. So like I said, they're quite easy to remove once the fish starts to play ball. So yep, single hook. It's normally generally pretty easy to work its way out and you're not having to worry about having, you know, mul like I said, multiple treble hooks. There you go, the hook's out. Fish hasn't, isn't any worse for wear. There's not too much damage to the fish. Importantly, no damage to the angler's hands. When you're fishing the estuaries, especially if you're fishing areas where there's a bit of current, there's like slightly like little bommies and little clusters of weed and weed beds and those sorts of things, is actually having an electric motor to actually allow you to maneuver in and out of the area so you can strategically work every little pocket as you're working, as, you, as your boat's moving along. So rather than being at the at the whim of the, the current, you actually use your electric to move the bow of the motor around slightly. And it's, it's a fantastic way to fish. The other advantage of having an electric, it actually allows you to creep up on the fish. So rather than having a loud, chunky petrol motor that's making that big, loud thudding noise underneath, you've got the electric so you can actually approach the fish in stealth. So not only maneuverability, it allows you to actually sneak up on the fish, especially if you're working small areas where you've got to make a really accurate cast. Rather than try to make a really, really long cast, you can use your electric to creep up on that area and then make a cast out and hopefully uh, subdue one of those challenging finicky estuary fish. Yep, on. Woo! <laughs> I was working that little patch in the weed there. I saw a couple of flashes and I suspect they were probably blackfish. So I sort of just dropped down to a slightly smaller lure and um, Another nice Sambo's picked it up. A little bit, uh, this one's acrobatic. <laughs> You're not happy about that lure in his mouth. See there, the drag's set just nicely so that if he wants to take line, he can, but at the same time, he's got to work, making him work a bit, so I'm tiring him out. I can get him close to the boat, net him, and hopefully get a cast back in against one of these other little sand patches. You can see with these fish, they're actually in very good condition. Quite solid through the shoulder there. But they're, you can see the girth in their stomach. Like he is a good solid fish. You can see one thing about the sa salmon, why they're such good fighting fish is they've got quite a thick, prominent tail wrist. But the other thing about them is they're like a torpedo. Once they get in their water, and they get that mouth closed. And that's why when you're fishing small soft plastics or small lures and the fish actually engulf it, they're quite a challenging fight because they can keep their mouth closed and they can torpedo through the water. Uh, when you're using bigger lures or you're using a bigger bait, say off a beach, a, a gang rig or something, quite often the salmon have got their mouth open so they can't keep their mouth closed and power through. So you can generally get them in a little bit quicker. But in, this, in the estuary systems, especially when you're fishing light tackle and small lures, they're just great fun. Never get sick of catching those blokes. <laughs> so the other thing when you can do when you're chasing salmon, if they're busting up like this, rather than let your plastic sink to the bottom, you can actually work it sort of not, not too fast, but just across the surface. And you can see you can get them, get them excited and they'll start following. But then occasionally if they're, you're winding too fast, they'll, they'll turn off. So just as you're winding really quickly, just give it a pause, let your plastic sink a little bit, and then boom, bingo, you should be on. 
So just get a bit of speed up to attract them and then slow it down a little bit. Just like that. It's not that difficult. Because the salmon, they get excited, they see that, that little bait fish or that, it's a lot of the time when there's a little bit of sun too, you get that shimmer or gleam or reflection of your lure going through the water. Salmon pick up on that and then if you just slow it down and pause it, a lot of the time they'll smash it. The salmon will move chasing the bait. So if you're fishing a particular tidal cycle and you're fishing an area here and the fish disappear, more than likely they're moved up or down the system chasing bait. So the best thing is to do, if you haven't seen them, actually move up, up the system, especially if it's a running tide, they're more than likely the salmon are moving up, further up in the system chasing where that bait are, or the reverse, obviously, if, this, if it's an outgoing tide, as the tide's going out, salmon might be moving back towards the entrance, so head back down there if you want to chase them. The other thing we found, it just went quiet there for sort of about 20 minutes or half an hour, and we didn't see any fish. So what we did is we moved the boat over might be a little bit hard to pick up on the camera, but there's a few patches of weed and quite big underwater bongies. And they come up sort of a metre or so, and if you imagine it's just like a couple of big rocks covered in kelp and so on. What I suspect has happened is the bait fish have moved in there to protect themselves away from the salmon, because out in the deeper water and in the, in the deeper troughs, they were quite easy picking. So I think what's happened is the bait fish have moved in, and you can see them now, the salmon have obviously honed in on them, worked out the bait fish are there. The bait fish are now scattering and the salmon are having a feast. So it just, just pay, it, it pays when you're fishing to use your powers of observation to look around the estuary and see what's going on. We noticed a couple of ripples and a few birds working. We moved over here, saw a little bit of bait sitting in the water and then Bob Junkle, the fish are there and you're on. Fishing the south coast estuaries of New South Wales is just fantastic fun especially when you're chasing these Australian salmon. They're a great sport fish. You can catch them all day. You don't need a lot of tackle. Seven foot spin rod, 2000 size spin reel, filled with six pound braid and some light fluorocarbon leaders and you can have a ball on these fish. A handful of soft plastics. They're just great fun. Great sports fish, fight hard. And you can have a ball all day. Best thing is you can catch a couple, have a bit of fun, take a couple of quick picks, put them back in the water. So if you want to give it a go, it's not, it's not difficult and you will have an absolute ball. It's one of the guarantees. Fish still busting up everywhere, but we've had our field today. So we'll um, put this one back and we can uh, head back to the boat ramp. Here we go, fella.